The opening rounds of the Marangoni Gas Shocks Compact Cup were snowed off at Donington in March, but its all systems go at Brands Hatch. Entry levels have doubled since this time last year with a host of newcomers, including last year's Sax Max champ Owen Hunter and the driver who won last year's MR2 crown. So Paul Hinson, you won the MR2 championship last season, but you've moved over to the Marangoni Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Tell us why. Well, first and foremost, I love the 750 Motor Club and didn't really want to leave. I've got a lot of friends around the paddock, so um, we wanted to stay in the 750 if we could. Um, being in single seaters, it's so highly competitive. We really wanted to um, try and have a single seat, uh, sorry, single make series, um, competitive racing, and really looking around the paddock. Um, the BMW Compact Cup was there, mm -hmm. so we had a look at the series. Went to Go Motorsport at Silverstone. Mm -hmm. And really things went from there. Um, myself and Alex from Rising Sun Racing um, bought ourselves a car. Um, started in February and uh, here we are at, a, as you can see, a rather wet brand's hatch waiting for the races tomorrow. Derek Carruthers is with me, the Sales and Marketing Director of Marangoni Tyres. Well, Derek, first of all, just tell us a bit about Marangoni because it's a name that some people might not be that familiar with. Yeah, Marangoni is probably the, the biggest tyre company or the smallest tyre company you've never heard of before. Uh, there's two tyre manufacturing companies in Italy, Pirelli, which everybody has heard of, and Marangoni Tyre. We're based in, uh, in Rome, just about 40 miles from the, from the city. So you've got involved with the Marangoni Gas Shocks Compact Cup this year. What was the reasoning behind that decision? Yeah, we really wanted to take uh, a foothold in real grassroots motorsport. We spent the last three or four years doing different stuff in the tuning markets and drifting, and this was a natural progression into grassroots motorsport. Okay, and why the Compact Cup in particular out of all of the championships out there? Yeah, that's a good question. Probably the size of the grid attracted us because it's got a really full grid and seems still to be growing. The organisers are extremely professional mm -hmm. and we get really good really good uh, coverage with the number of cars on the grid. Mm -hmm. Absolutely and of course you're supplying the tyres for the championship as well, just tell us a little bit about those. Yeah there's two there's two types of tyres that we supply, one is semi-sleek for in the dry obviously in beautiful conditions like today and then there's a standard road tyre which we use for the wet. Mm -hmm. 42 cars qualified, they've been split into three groups, each will race twice during the course of the day and it's Steve Roberts and Robin Welsh that line up on the front of the grid. David Drinkwater will be missing from row six, he has had some clutch problems and further back on row eight, Chris Etheridge and Mark Bennett right in the midfield on row eight. On the inside of row ten you've got Scott Carruthers in the Marangoni car, next to him is Andrew Cunningham and Roger Everett, Matthew Warren and Faraz Darva will round out the 27 car grid. It's the white car of Roberts and the silver car of Welsh on the front of the grid. Then the second silver car is ex-low cost racer Martin Gambling, Colin Bysouth. Next to him Gambling doesn't make a very good start at all and that delays Alex Jew who slotted in behind him on the inside of row number three but it's Roberts that's made the best start then as they head down through Paddock Hill Bend for the first time but Robin Welch who's a successful BMW driver won around here at Brands Hatch last year when it was still a non-championship event of course he slots into second place and it looks like By South has made it up into third Gambling has lost quite a few places there someone heading out of the pit lane that may well be Simon Roach as the lead is down at Graham Hill Bend for the first time and already starting to pull away from Colin by South in third position running a little bit wide over the kerb on the exit of Graham Hill Bend the officials will be keeping an eye on that all day long I should think and now we go on board with Colin by South who's very crossed up through Surtees and McLaren Colin made his debut here in the equivalent round 12 months ago and acquitted himself very well indeed and running very strongly here in this the opening round of the season there's the gas shocks car of Mark Gazard. He's made up places from the start. Here's a replay. You can see Mark Gazard there on the outside of row four. He did get away quite nicely. He was drawing alongside Paul Hinson there. You could see the slow getaway for Martin Gambling as well. But everyone more or less away safely. Still Roberts leading from Walsh and by South. Here's Martin Gambling. Now he's recovered one of those places. He was seventh at the end of lap one former low-cost race winner now back ahead of Neil Trotter and up into P6 there's a fight for fourth and fifth that's uh, Mark Gazard who made that great start and Paul Hinson in the Rising Sun racing car 300 pounds from a scrapyard that machine Simon Roach looks to be out of the race our pit lane starter now Hinson here through on the inside and ahead of Neil Trotter 
Well, that's a great move, and now Alex Dew to try to follow through as well. This is lap six of the race. Up towards Druids they go, and yes, the ex stock hatch and Clio Cup racer has got that move done, and he now moves up into seventh position. Alex Dew delayed, of course, by that slow start for Martin Gambling. There's By South going through pitch, and then it's still Gazard in fourth place, Gambling fifth, Hinson now sixth, Dew is seventh and Neil Trotter and that very smartly turned out green and white car eighth and a big slide there for the number 13 car and that is Farad Darva the Salisbury driver on board here with Chris Everidge who was always oh, so crossed up all over the grass can he rejoin safely um, yes he can but spinning off in sympathy in the background we've got a couple of cars off I wonder if there's some fluid down 10 Scott Carruthers and before that 27 was Stephen Biddulph Farad Darva was the first to go there. Running up inside the top ten. On board with Mark Gazard. And he's lost a place there, hasn't he, to Martin Gambling. So Martin Gambling up at Druids goes up into fourth position. And already Mark Gazard of the co-sponsors Gas Shocks just starting to lose a little bit of ground there. There's that trotter car, and somebody slowing, it's the car with the Union Jack, and that's one of the back markers, I think, yes, it's Biddulph who had that spin a moment ago. Now the black and white driving standards flag going out for somebody. Still that fight for 7th and 8th positions going on, Neil Trotter trying to find a way past Alex Dew, looking around the outside of him going into Paddock Hill Bend, but Dew experienced enough to fend that off. Great fights going on all of the way down the field as we go into the closing stages now. 27 starts in this race, 42 in all here over the weekend. There's that 10 car of Carruthers that had the spin earlier on. And our race leader, Steve Roberts, now with some daylight between himself and the second place man, Robin Welsh. Oh, and a spinner! Very lucky not to collect somebody else there. That's the number nine car, Iggy Kwesi from Braintree in Essex. Now facing in the opposite direction to that of the traffic and on his final lap Steve Roberts has pulled out a decent advantage over Robin Welsh now the ex Northwest Formula Ford 1600 champion he won that title back in 2004 had some success during the course of last season and he wins the first round of this season in the Marangoni Gas Shocks BMW Compact Cup rest of the field making their way through Robin Welsh 2.6 seconds adrift Colin Bysouth completing the podium let's look at the full results now and there they go it's Roberts that took the win as we say by 2.6 seconds gambling after that disappointing start climbed back to fourth Paul Hinson who was pleased with fifth place on his debut Mark Gazard completed the top six Steve you must be very pleased with that start to the season yeah, perfect start. Um, after we built the pace last year, we're going for the championship this year. I don't think it's no secret of that, but I'm not going to take the championship approach. I want to win races, so that's what we'll go out to do. Um, but perfect start, considering the amount of preparation time we've had. We're very ill-prepared for this first round, uh, so we just want to get it out with some good points, but that was some good points, so I'm happy. Okay, Robin, well, second position, you've got Steve in your sights, but you couldn't do anything about him. No, no, really, really good race. I never raced Steve, didn't know him, never seen anything he's done. Um, I got a good start on his tail and I thought, right, I'll, um, I'll close him down. I was pushing too hard, nearly fell off a few times going into Paddock Hill. Um, every time I looked at my mirror, little bicep was getting closer and closer and closer. His tyre preservation was fantastic. I cooked my tyres within about the third lap, um, but great race. The Marangoni tyre is fantastic. It, it, it lends itself very well to this sort of racing. It's great. Welcome back to Brands Hatch for race two. Robin Welsh should have been lining up on pole position, but he sold his car before the race, so Stuart Voice on his own on the front of the grid by South and Stratton Mackay on row number two. On the inside of row four, Mark Gazard, who made such a great start to the earlier race, and he's next to Clint Bardwell. Neil Roach and Kevin Denwood 
both disappointed, I should think, with their qualifying sessions. We've seen them close to the sharp end in the past. Greg Barlow and Owen Hunter alongside one another on row 11 of the grid. And it's Matthew Warren, Stephen Brown and Jim Carolan that complete the field. So that space on the front of the grid then, Stuart Voice was the four man towards the end of last season. Let's see if that carries over to this year. He was the fastest man in qualifying by 16 one hundredths of a second. Faster than Stephen Roberts and he's made a decent start here. 27 cars get off the line then and it is Stuart Voice on the outside of the front row that leads. And it looks to me as if it might be Stratton Mackay that has slotted into second place and David Mountain into third. Colin Bysouth couldn't capitalise on the gap that was in front of him, vacated by Robin Welsh, and he has dropped back down to fourth position. Bysouth, of course, the highest placed driver on the grid to have already taken part in one race today. I wonder if that will be an advantage to him or maybe a disadvantage with more wear on the tyres. Someone's been spat out of the pack there. It looks like the number 60 car of Terry Davis. A quick trip through the gravel at Graham Hill Bend and he gets going once more. Look at this lead for Stuart Voice though already. It's a commanding advantage that he has in that number 21 car. The man from Billericay in Essex over the line. But then it's much tighter for second place Stratton Mackay. We've seen a lot of him at Brands Ash, I should say, in recent years racing against the likes of Rod Burley in uh, local races down here overtaking manoeuvres going on down the order as well through Paddock Hill Bend it's not for the faint hearted now Colin Bysouth in fourth place trying to find a way past Dave Mountain here the Mount Tune man leaves the door open just locks a bit of a, a break there I thought Colin Bysouth might be poised to make an attempt but the thing is yet from the young driver, only in his second season of racing. It's from Romford in Essex, turning his way through McLaren now towards Clearways. Two cars immediately ahead of him, but he's already losing sight of Stuart Voice. You can see Stuart Voice just that pinprick in the distance, really. Colin will be disappointed that he's let the race lead again away so far already. Over the line they go again then. The car with a bit more daylight between himself and the yellow car of Dave Mountain this time. More action going on down the order. Owen Hunter, the 47 car, has made up some ground after a disappointing qualifying session. Qualified on the outside of row 11, I could see. That's Warren Gazard, Mark's brother. Started a row behind him on the grid here in the number 40 car. And let's see how he fends. Often to be seen occupying a very similar part of the racetrack, the two brothers. Great sight these cars make as they head down towards Surtees corner. That's the number four car there. And that's Clint Bardwell, the ex-Mazda racer. And I think that's the 57 car behind him, which is Will Gibson. Well, Colin Bysouth now has lost a bit of ground to Dave Mountain, if anything. By South was on the podium for the opening race of the weekend, finishing in third place. Let's see if he can replicate that finish here. He's going to need to do something about Dave Mountain, though. And in actual fact, he's got the Paul Hinson car looming large in his mirrors now. Paul adapting well to this racing. Oh, and a tangle there. And it's the number 28 car, I think that is. Yes, it is the 28 car of Daniel Kirby from Malden, the novice driver, as you can see from the black cross on the yellow background that's gone off into the gravel. Well, they'll learn from that. By South, still in fourth position, still focused on the rear end of the 318 Ti, 1.9 litre car of Dave Mountain, who now looks to be attacking for second position. It's Mountain against Mackay. By South carried good speed there through McLaren, and he's with Dave Mountain now. They almost touch. He's on the inside line through Clearway's corner. And Colin Bysouth, has he made it through? Yes, he has. But Dave Mountain determined to come back at him now as they head along the start and finish straight. They're overlapping half a car length between the nose of the two cars as they head down towards Paddock Hill Bend. Still side by side now. And it looks like it's the yellow car of Mountain that's got back in front. 
up towards Druitt. By South has the inside line for the hairpin though. There's a gap there, just about I think. He can't make use of it though. And still Colin by South who is resigned to fourth position. Stuart Voice, don't forget, is pulling away. Oh, and a mistake from Mountain there. Voice has to go over the curb in avoidance. He's put him back alongside uh, by South, I beg your pardon. They're overlapping again as they go through Surtees and now right at McLaren corner. Has by South got it done yet? He's still not got it done. The orange car with the nose ahead now of Dave Mountain, the tuning expert. And he goes down to th uh, fourth position finally. Oh, what a big slide for the 57 car. That's but the 55 car of Kevin Denwood on the grass and he tags someone else. That's Neil Roach. Oh, and into the barrier. And that's a big hit, I'm afraid, for number 81, Neil Roach, the young driver who races with his brother, has got rather a lot of damage to the front of that car. And it's not in the best of positions on the run up to Druids. It's not going to go anywhere. Wheels are hanging off it. It's going to need a new front end at the very least. Now, here is the fight for second place. It is held at the moment by Strutton Mackay, who's raced MGs in the past. The Scooby, Subaru and Prepter, more recently. Now he's in a fight with Colin Bysouth, who's over second place. Oh, that's good to see. Neil Roach out of his car and helped over the barriers by the marshal. It looks like the race is continuing, though, but not for Kevin Danwood. He was caught up in all of that. Pure racing accident with that caught initially by the sideways moment for number 57, Will Gibson. On to the final lap then. And by South has now made his way ahead of Strutter Mackay. But this man, Stuart Voice, is well ahead of them and he takes the chequered flag now. A great victory for Stuart Voice. And where are the rest of them? They're a long way behind. It looks like it's going to be Colin by South in the end who does take P2. It's been a great battle between himself and Strutton Mackay in the final laps of this race, but he's eventually pulled somewhat clear. And here are the results then. Stuart Boyce winning by 11.3 seconds in the end. No surprise that he got fastest lap as well, 58.64. Colin Bice out second, Strutton Mackay third. Dave Mountain, Paul Hinson and Bryce Greenwood completed the top six. Stuart, you made that first race of the, your season look very easy. Yeah, it was uh, not too bad. It was quite hard, especially with these tyres, but we made it uh, go well and just kept me head down and just keep on pushing so yeah it was good. I guess you've done this before haven't you but you're on different tyres this season have you had to learn their different characteristics? Of course cool, yeah it's a big jump from the uh, triple eights to the Marangonis but once they uh, you start getting your head around them they you sort of know where they're going to go but you've got to give them a couple of laps and then you can uh, you can feel it working then afterwards yeah. Brilliant thank you. OK, Colin, a third and a second today. That's a good, solid start to your year. Uh, definitely. I'm uh, very pleased, very chuffed. A great dice you had there, especially towards the end of the race with Stratton, wasn't it? <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, it's, uh, I was saying that's, how, that's what we come here to race for. I was just uh, having a discussion. Uh, good, clean racing, no door banging. It was uh, no, fantastic, really clean racing. That really gets your uh, adrenaline pumping. So. E excellent, thank you. OK, Stratton, you were second for much of the race. You lost out for third in the end, but uh, I think you still enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, it was an absolute thrill. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed the race. Um, you know, I, I can't believe it. Yeah, first, first time out in the compact. It's a completely different car to what I'm used to driving. Uh, Virgo Motorsport have put together a brilliant, brilliant package for me to drive, and it shows that a, a nicely set up car. Even though I'm a bit of a heavyweight compared to, um, you know, Colin, who's about three stone ringing wet, you, you can have a decent race. And I would like to say, Colin, just absolutely superb you know quite a young driver but fantastic amount of respect i'd race with people like that every day of the week superb something's got to give in this final race of the day as stuart voice and steve roberts are earlier winners line up alongside one another on the front row of the grid stratton mckay and martin gambling on row two as the red lights go out a great start there by dave mountain squeezing alongside stratton mckay as they head down towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time and look at that yellow and black car on the left hand side of your picture that's David Drinkwater he missed the earlier race and started 12th for this one just kicking up a bit of dust there from the edge of the gravel trap as he rounds Paddock Hill Bend up towards Druid he goes for the first time then and look he's already up into about 4th or 5th position 
from 12th on the grid. That's a wonderful start for David Drinkwater, who had those clutch problems earlier on. Down through Druid, Graham Hill Bend they go, and up towards Surtees. It was Stuart Voice that was leading with Steve Roberts in second place. Martin Gambling seemed to have made a better start this time. He's running in third place, and there's Drinkwater in fourth, but he goes out wide through clearways, through the gravity goes, and all of that good work has gone to waste because he started 11th and he's back, or started 12th. He's now back down to about 13th position. He's got it all to do all over again as David Drinkwater. Up towards Druid goes the number 40 car off Warren Gazard making his way around the hairpin and now down towards Graham Hill Bend with quite a queue of cars behind him now. You can see Terry Davis there with the number 60 car. And from Salisbury. He's uh, in the thick of that as well and also I think involved is number 20 and that's James Cook. James Cook heading through picture there pursued by number 13 for Rod Darva who had that big moment there in the earlier race and now trying to find a way past going into clearways not sure that he can make that work possibly the car behind him is the number 65 car of Simon Roach now, there is number 47 Owen Hunter trying to make a move there and that is on that number 20 car of James Cook and he goes through well neither of those cars with a great deal in the way of sponsors on the side of the car I'm sure they'd be very grateful for your help if you can help them out number 33 goes through as well that's Chris Etheridge he's made up some ground novice cross on the side of his car well, the two leaders here are absolutely locked in combat. A big moment there for Stuart Voice. It's been really tight all the way throughout this race and that's left the door open for Steve Roberts to get his car alongside as they go through Graham Hill Bend. They're absolutely alongside one another now. These two had a bit of a tangle at angles here last year. Oh, and someone going off there. And that's for us, Darva, number 14. On to the final lap then. Not many opportunities left for Steve Roberts to try and make his move. Through McLaren, now through clearways they go. He's about two and a half car lengths behind the race leader, Stuart Voice. Stuart Voice won by more than 10 seconds early on, but he's been given a real workout here by the former British Formula Ford Championship racer. Up to the line they come. Checkered flag is out. Checkered flag goes to Stuart Voice. And you can see his winning margin that time, just 0.24 seconds. In third place, Dave Mountain, fourth, Martin Gambler, got a great recovery drive to fifth from David Drinkwater, who also got the fastest lap. OK, Stuart, that was a very different race to you earlier one, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. A lot more uh, competitive there. We just had to keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. And, uh, yeah, hope we bring it home, really. Yeah, so it was good. But a perfect start to the season. You must be really pleased with how today's gone. Oh, yeah, he is really pleased, yeah. So thanks to all my sponsors, like Baron and Geeshan and Momo and Voice Tune and Bob, Bob Buck for helping me through the, this year. So it's, it's been pretty good. Hopefully we can get it through the whole year, really, like this. Excellent, thank you. Thanks a lot. It's been a great start to the season at Brands Hatch. Let's hope for more of the same at Snetterton. Join us then. <laughs>